Hey, so this is another screencast talking about roguelike browser boilerplate. It's a web-based template for making your own roguelike game using JavaScript and web technology. Uh, in this series, I'm showing you how to customize the boilerplate to make your own game. And in today's screencast, I'm going to show you uh, a user request, which was um, modifying the map. So the map is procedurally generated, but somebody wanted to put in their own hard-coded map. And uh, I'll show you how to customize that and also some other options for um, creating your own maps and creating different maps. So let's get stuck into it. Um, as with the, as previously, you can get the boilerplate itself on itch uh, by searching for roguelike browser boilerplate. And I'll also put a link um, below the video. And I'm using slingcode.net to edit the boilerplate. Uh, it's a online editor. You can go to, so once you get the zip file from itch.io, you can uh, click upload zip and it'll load the, the uh, project in here with all the source code. So you've got the HTML, JavaScript, CSS file and some other files here. If we run the, run the initial code, we can see how it looks by default. Um, and each, each time the game is run, you get this randomly generated map. So this map here is completely randomly generated. Let's take a look at where in the code that's generated. If you go down to, if you scroll down to um, where it says generate map, this is the function where it, it's uh, generated on, the, on line 220 near the top of the file. And as it says here, we're using the rot.js digger tile map. So digger is an algorithm that from the rot.js library that it uses to draw these dungeons. Um, and they, they have a bunch of other different ones. So you can go to uh, the if you copy this link here and paste it into your browser you can see that there are several different built-in map generation algorithms that come with rot.js um, so let's just take a look at a couple of the ones here the, the one that uh, comes with the boilerplate is uh, this dungeon map here so digger yeah so that's this one here and you can uh, play around with some of these parameters yourself if you want. Um, I think you can say in here, in Digger, you can actually pass arguments, which are the first two parameters. So instead of saying width 100, so we'll say with 200, height is 100. We pass that one in, and the render is actually only drawing it to this size. But we can um, make it smaller, obviously. So if you wanted to make a map that was 20 by 10, that just draws a little one room map or a 50 by 10 if you want a long thin one, um, 80 by 10. Yeah, so you see, you can play around with the different sizes in there. Uh, in the boilerplate, we're just calling that with uh, tile options.width, tile options.height. So you can set those options at the top here where we have uh, width and height, 25 by 40. So that's a fairly standard small dungeon size. Um, the boilerplate, the map is vertically orientated, so it's 25 wide by 40 high and the reason for that is because it feels better on mobile devices which the boilerplate supports but you can set it to whatever size you like obviously the larger you get the more cpu it'll take so um, don't go putting in 10,000 by 20,000 height um, but if you want to completely change the type of uh, the type of dungeon that's drawn there um, you could use some of these other algorithms so there's uh, there's this uniform one, which uh, generates a set of rooms and tries to connect them afterwards. So it's a slightly different algorithm. There's the original BSD rogue algorithm. Now just note that some of these don't have the same uh, the same functions as the same methods as the digger map. So the digger map, we later use the rooms. We iterate through each of the rooms using map.getRooms. If it doesn't, if you're, uh, if the, the uh, generator use you, you use doesn't support that method then you'll have to uh, figure out a different way to draw those rooms or maybe you won't need to um, yeah so if you wanted to let's say you wanted to hard code a map as the request was that came in um, the the core bit you need to look at in here is uh, inside this dig callback which gets called for each cell that gets generated by the generator it's passed x y and value and all it's doing is setting game.map key equals dot. Now what that's doing is saying key here is x comma y. It's just a string, a lookup string. And 
what that's doing is saying at each position x and y just set the current tile to be dot so every time the generator creates a new um, location set it to dot if we wanted to hard code a, uh, a, a level what we can do is just comment out from the beginning of digger here and let's say we want to just make a big square room so we're going to say for let i equals zero i is less than what was our so tile uh, well, let's say let's just make a room that's 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 so i plus plus so we're going to do two loops here and all we're going to do is set the floor to be a dot for every single location in that in that um, room so we've got i well let's call it actually x and y that makes a bit more sense x y y and we're going to say our key here is the same our lookup is going to be x comma y and we're just going to set game map at that position to be a dot just like we did before except now we're just looping through 20 by 20 to set the cells to zero um, actually you know what I'm going to offset that into the map a little bit so I'm going to start at 10 what's the size here it's uh, 25 by 40 so our width has to be less than 25 so what we'll do is make a square starting at 5 and finishing at 20 and starting at 10 and finishing at 30 um, in the vertical and just setting it to a big a big square so we'll go from x equals 5 to x is less than 20 and we'll go from y is 10 to y is less than 30 and we're just going to set those set that to dot let's run that code and see what happens uh, nothing all right what have we done here let's have a look at the console to see if we've got any errors here so free cells is not defined okay so also in here in the bit of code we commented out sorry I'll just highlight that for you down here you can see the error free cells is not defined in the generate map method uh, function so what we're going to do is we also need to push each of those so free cells is basically an array storing all of the free cells in the game that something else can be put on so a piece of uh, gold or a uh, chest can be put on those locations so we need to also add them uh, now free cells is defined in here so what I'm going to do is just move that bit out that's defined here and we're going to make sure that we add free cells there so you know what we actually want to do also is add the zero cells but let's just leave zero cells blank for now and see if that works okay hasn't worked um, digger is not defined okay so let's find digger okay with our generation rooms algorithm we're just going to comment out because what that does is draw borders around the rooms but we don't have any rooms in this so we're just going to leave them blank um, yeah so that's work now what we've got is a giant square um, just filled the the generate items um, function is still calling is still using the free cells array so we get this uh, it knows that it can use anything in this whole in this whole square any position to place these items and as you can see it's gonna be very difficult to get away from the monster because it's just a giant just a giant square but yeah that shows you how you can customize the map to and obviously you could make much more complicated shapes here we've just looped through from 5 to 20 and 10 to 30 to make this big rectangle but you could uh, make whatever complicated uh, thing you liked. You could use a tile editor and read in the values that you put in from that. Um, yeah, but the sky's the limit in terms of customizing the map how you want. And obviously, yeah, you can take a look at these rot.js. Uh, some of these other types of maps are very interesting. So you've got these cellular maps, which are more like a um, sort of like open air, open field type of look and uh, with, you know, different uh, trees or something like that and uh, the maze map here which is also an interesting one i don't think i've played any roguelikes with the maze but you can do that too so yeah that covers how to customize the map basically it's just editing this game map key and setting the tile value that you want there and then putting the ones that are free onto free cells 
And if you want the uh, outside the map to show up, well, let's just quickly show you that. Basically, if you want uh, to show trees, um, as we had before, so the default is for trees to show up. And that means we want to put, if we want the scenery to find the right position to go, we need to also populate this other thing called zero cells. So zero cells are cells with nothing on them. Um, so what we're going to do is just loop through, before we set the floor tiles, we're going to loop through every cell and just set zero cells at that position to be a zero cell. Um, so we're going to loop from zero to 25 in X and zero to 40 in the Y and just set that to, actually we don't even need that line. We just need to zero cells dot push key and define the key here. Yep. So now this should fill the whole thing first with zero cells. And that means the later when we do generate scenery with the zero cells, it knows where to put the trees outside the box. And then afterwards it puts the uh, free cells in there. So, ah, okay. So no, that hasn't worked because we have to say if X is less than five and x is greater than 20 and y is less than yeah. anyway basically you need to block out this area here and say that it shouldn't be a um yeah what would be a better way is basically looping through and checking. So loop through the whole thing and check if it's greater than five. So if uh, X is greater than five and Y, okay, so if it's inside the box. So if X is greater than five and X is less than 20 and Y is greater than 10 and Y is less than 30, then we want to add it to zero cells. Else we want to add it to free cells. So what we're going to do is, yeah, so what that's doing is looping through the whole thing and doing the zero cell check separately. And then obviously we can delete this block here because we no longer need it. And we can run that one. And some kind of error. But key is not defined because we haven't declared this outside the check. We go. Set the key there, then check whether it's in the bounds, and then yep, run it. All right, so, yep, because we haven't set map game.map key equals, so we have to tell it where the floor tiles are, because right now we've got no floor tiles. All right, one more try, there we go. Mm, not quite. cells, zero cells. Right, yeah, I had those two variables mixed up. So the free cells are the ones where you can freely put something on. Zero cells are ones outside the game, so you can put scenery on them. And there we go. You can see now we've got our main square with the items, the monsters, and all the gameplay in it. And outside of the uh, main area is the trees, etc. Yeah, and so that's basically how you customize the map. I hope, you, uh, hope that's useful for making your own maps using either procedural algorithms or, you know, doing it from scratch, uh, hand crafting maps. Thanks very much for watching.